Hello and thanks for joining me for some more landscape photography. Now in this one we're going to be heading out into the mountains in a short while but I thought I'd start with what has become something of a regular feature with a couple of images that I've shared on social media since my last video but if you just follow me on this channel uh, you may not have seen them before. This first one is from a fabulous afternoon out with Stuart McGlennon at Westwater in the Lake District. A great opportunity to spend a few hours with Stuart and tap into his local knowledge. I wasn't filming so it meant that I had a day with all of my pro glass with me parked right by the lake with Stuart pointing out the, the best spots for the best compositions. This next image is from last weekend down at uh, the Church in the Sea. Haven't been there for quite a while. It's a good time of year winter because you do get the sunset behind the church as seen from the beach. Only time of year when you'll get that. Uh, not a brilliant sunset but some quite nice colours. Uh, and as you may know, because I have talked about it on other forums, that uh, I'm going to be using a series of prime lenses certainly over the next six to twelve months I should think. Uh, so this was one of my first outings with them shot on my 25mm f1.8. Okay, so that's a couple of images caught up on. There are some more on my Facebook and my Micro Four Thirds group. So if you're interested in that, have a look. Uh, it's a good group actually, worth joining. Uh, I think the link will be in the description if I remember to put it there. Now, let's get off into the mountains. When there's snow in the mountains, the Orguin Valley is the obvious place to come. It's not somewhere that I usually visit other than in the depths of winter because it's so busy. And even now in mid-December, it's still absolutely packed. So you do have to have a flexible plan with regards to parking. Uh, I'm right underneath the north ridge of Trevan and uh, most of the summits are in cloud. I had intended to get up onto a ridge, but it doesn't look like there's going to be a lot of points. So I'm going to be flexible, just go for a stroll and see where it takes me. So I'm just traveling pretty light today, some basic equipment. I've got my little 25 litre backpack on, with a few layers um, and the smallest camera cube you'll ever see, but I've actually got six lenses with me. So we'll have a look around those later on. Um, but my pack probably weighs no more than about 10, maybe 12 pounds. And all my video gear in this little uh, wandered sling that I clip on in front and it's really handy. So the mountains are looking lovely but I think that heading up onto a ridge would be a bit pointless because uh, there's so much low cloud uh, scudding through that really wouldn't see much. So I've decided I'm going to head off up uh, the little river of Avon Schleuer which sits right opposite Trevan. Uh, it's where I had planned to bring my friend Gary Norman, who was supposed to be coming to visit this weekend. So, uh, yeah, uh, Gary, let's see how badly you're missing out. Well, I've not climbed very far, uh, I've already found an image. I'm not actually planning to go that high up because 
I really want to try and get a nice picture of Trevan and there's no mileage in heading further up the mountain and then having to zoom back in. Also, I want to be kind of looking up at it. Uh, very often when you head up onto the Hanging Valley at uh, Kumschloya, you're looking straight across and you don't have to go far up the eastern shoulder of Penarolwyn and you're looking down on it. So what I want is something that really makes the mountain stand out in the composition. But before that, uh, I found a little composition here, way over in the background over there. There's a fabulous holly bush that's absolutely covered in berries not far off Christmas. Now, uh, I thought that would make quite a nice point of interest in a shot that picks out the backdrop of Voile Gorg, uh, which has got lots of interesting clouds scraping across it. It's taken me quite a while to sort this image out. And let me explain why. Now, apologies for the dodgy camera work, but uh, I've only got one tripod with me. As I said earlier, I'm traveling light. Hopefully you can see the camera screen. Over on the right hand side there's that holly bush and at the bottom is a little rocky outcrop with a, with a nice ridge of snow on it. Uh, the problem I had was that I started composing the image slightly further down the mountain and let me show you what that did to it. Now can you see how that ridge now is immediately underneath the holly bush? And if I went for this particular shot, all of my interest is over on the right hand side of the image. And so I had to kind of wrangle myself into uh, a far less comfortable position for setting up my tripod, but a much better position for the shot itself. And I've got a couple of shots of this holly bush in the bag now, I'm shooting it in high res. Uh, interesting to see how this 45mm prime will work out. Travan behind me is just thinking about clearing those clouds away and there's a few splashes of light putting in an appearance. So I'm going to head up another 50 metres or so, get up alongside the stream and, and muck about up there for a bit. But before I do that, I mentioned earlier I was just going to show you around my camera cube. So let's just take a quick look at it. Well, this is interesting. It's just started snowing on me. Uh, we'll press on anyway because I haven't got time to reshoot this. This is my current camera cube. It's actually the Wandered Large Tech Pouch. Absolutely brilliant bit of kit. You've probably seen it strapped to my tripod leg in previous videos. Um, and whilst I've had this on with my filters and spare batteries and uh, remote shutter and that sort of thing, I've usually only had maybe one or two lenses in it, but now that I've switched over to primes, um, I've got the ability to carry pretty much everything that I might need um, and room to spare. So I'm currently talking to you using my 9 to 18 millimeter. They're all Olympus. Um, that's my general filming lens. It's been on my OM-1 as I was walking up and talking to you earlier. It's now on my G100 because obviously I'm taking stills with the OM-1. So on the OM-1 at the moment is the 45 mil that I was just taking a shot of that little holly bush with. Then I've got in here the uh, 12 mil, uh, that's an F2. Uh, I've also got 17 mil F1.8. I've also got 25 mil F1.8. I've really enjoyed using this. I've shared one or two images recently with this lens. So this is my standard prime, of course, full frame 50 mil equivalent. And then for those long range shots, and I'm bearing in mind, I want to travel as light as possible. I've also got the basic kit 40 to 150. Now I've taken some shots with this and I've shared them, but I haven't said which lens I've used. 
there'll be some purists out there who say, oh, that's an awful lens. You've got a 40 to 150 f2.8 Pro. Well, yes, I have, but that's pretty chunky. If I'm just going down my local beach with just my sling bag, yeah, of course I'll take that with me. But when I'm in the hills, to have a full set of glass that will run me out from full frame equivalent of 18 mil to 300 mil in this. And you know, it really weighs almost nothing. I can take advantage of what's going on around me uh, and not be sweating like a pig lugging a huge backpack up here. Morning. I'm sure you'll have heard people going on about how quickly things can change in the mountains. I've gone quite off piste. I'm still a long way south of the very famous uh, landmark dry stone wall, but I've headed off as you're climbing up to the right to get uh, a really good vantage point of Trevan. And also what I particularly wanted was some virgin snow that, that hasn't got footprints in it. So that required me to get quite some way off the main footpath. Now, I got settled in, found the perfect composition, um, and then this cloud bank rolled in and it's now emptying a blizzard right on me. Um, there's nothing to be seen more than about, uh, I suppose, 20 meters, if that. Let me show you. So, what I had about five minutes ago was the most spectacular view of Trevan. And as you can see, lots of absolutely beautiful snow and these fabulous rocks, what would have been framing the view. Now I'm sure it's not gonna to take too long to blow through and I'd intended to just sit here and have my lunch anyway. Uh, I've still got a good sort of two or three hours before sunset. So no problem at all, I'll just wait it out. The downside is I've got not much to look at. But these conditions, I love them. This is what the mountains are all about. Uh, it's not a challenge. I'm only 10 minutes from where I'm parked in reality. Well, all right, half an hour. But uh, I do hope that it clears up though. Uh, not worried about being stranded, but I hadn't yet taken my image. Uh, and this is what I specifically came to this neck of the woods to get. When I was parking up this morning and trying to decide which direction to head off in, I thought, I know, uh, with a bit of luck, I'll be able to find some nice clean snow and build that into an image of Trevan. That remains to be seen. I'm on my second pepper army. I've had a bag of twiglets. My ass is absolutely freezing. But I'm gonna sit down. I've got one of them sit pads with me, just as well. Been here about 45 minutes and it hasn't really cleared up at all. There's an argument that some of this mist down in the valley might work quite nicely, but not by itself. The only interesting thing that happened was a couple of hikers were walking up and they were about to walk straight through my foreground. But I managed to persuade them to take a wide berth around me. So my snow is still pristine and it's being added to. But if this sky doesn't clear up, that won't make any difference at all. Well, I sat there for about an hour and a half and it didn't look like it was going to clear up at all. By the time I decided to call it and head down, there was a good six, seven inches of snow and in places quite a lot deeper with holes underneath it. So 
always sensible really uh, if you're not fully equipped which I wasn't I didn't have spikes didn't have an axe with me so uh, very sensible to get off the hill while you can with relative ease uh, as I was heading down it started to clear a little and I looked across the valley and saw the snow plow scraping the A5 so I thought well they're taking it seriously so perhaps I should too um, but by the time I got back down into the valley wouldn't you believe it just in time for sunset it all cleared up nicely I sort of regret coming down as early as I did but you never know what's going to happen if I'd sat up there till four o'clock in the afternoon um, then it would have been quite a, a, a risky process coming down in the dark and you know, I'm an old bloke, so I've got to take these sort of things seriously. Anyway, I did manage to get a couple of handheld shots on the way up, which I've already shown you. And at that point, of course, I was thinking to myself, oh, I'm glad I grabbed those. But when I got down to the bottom and the skies started to clear up, I did get a few more shots that I'm going to share with you at the end. And I must admit, I was quite pleased with them. Anyway, going to leave it there for this one. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, why not subscribe and join me next time. Cheers. Bye.